I wrote it. I wrote it down, so I'll try to be as quick as possible. First of all, 25 years of this, this you know, when I first came here, and the jazz band was kind of like part of the program, but there was so much going on with the concert band and the marching band. The jazz band was kind of an afterthought. We asked kids who wanted to do it, we gave out some music, they practiced it, we got together for a couple rehearsals, then we played. It was okay, you know, it wasn't bad at all, because we had good musicians. And then the other band director at the time, Joe Van Sickle, said, well, you know, maybe you could do something with it. Because she was really, loved concert band. I said, okay. So we put out the call and said, who wants to do this? And we'll do it at 7 o'clock in the morning. Well, when 35 kids joined the jazz band, we were like, okay, this is pretty cool. But then after a while, that 7 o'clock got to it. So one week we'd have four trumpets, one week we'd have seven trumpets, and so on around. And some of the kids, then we started getting better, and some of the kids said, you know, what are you going to do about those kids that don't call, man? <laughs> do you want me to throw them out? No. But we want to be good. There's a bunch of us want to be good. I said, okay, how about Wednesday nights? Six to nine o'clock. They said, we'll see. So I put, wrote a memo to our supervisor of music at the time, asking him if we could form an extracurricular jazz band. And lo and behold, Spectrum was born. And we chose that name because over the years, they've played every imaginable genre and style of jazz you could ask for, the whole spectrum. But then we had to figure out, what do we do with the rest of them? So we said there was a lot of good players in there, and we didn't want them to feel like they were less. So we called it Jazz, comma, two, T-O-O, -O, because they played jazz too. And over the years, they've gotten pretty good. So that was how our jazz program was born, and that was about two years before, two or three years before our first jazz night. Well, now we were performing on the concert, three concert bands. One year we had four concert bands, two jazz bands. Like, it was just a marathon. Started at 7, got out at 10 after 10, and we just went, we got to do something about this. So I said, how about if I do a jazz night? And she said, fine, you'll run it? I said, yep, she goes, done. So that's when it was born 25 years ago, and it's been fabulous, fabulous to see the growth every year. And I'm going to name off some names, and you might recognize some of these, okay? And if I missed somebody, just holler out, okay? First of all, one, at one time, my son John graduated from Morristown High School and was in the band. And at one point, he became the lead trumpet player. Not if you know me, not because I'm dad, but because he deserved it. He worked his, you know what? And so I was very proud to have him as my lead trumpet player for Spectrum for three years. And you know who played saxophone right down the road from him? You'll recognize his name, Mike Eberhardt. They were in the band together, and John and Mike spent a lot of time as not only bandmates, but friends. Here's a couple. You might not see them, but two guys that set up, this is being professionally recorded by a former student of ours, who actually had the opportunity to do work with people like Paul McCartney and, oh, I'll just stop right there. The list goes down, okay? But right now he's working on the Dr. Oz show, so if you see him running around with the ponytail, Derek Vinchker, he was in our program, he graduated, went to school for audio, and he's got what I always called the golden ears. So if you see Derek, this concert is going to be, it, it's going to be great. Okay, I'm tip my tape. And here's some other guys. Okay, um, Skip Skip Yingling from Mars Plains. He's the music director at the Presbyterian Church. Skip here. Okay. Say what? I hear mumbling. Okay, um, Mr. Estes, Mr. Estes' son was one of the lead tenors one year. He went to school for, at the Duke for engineering, 
Then he got a job as an engineer, and then he decided he wanted to be a lawyer. So he went back to school, and he's a lawyer now. Okay, one of our jazz band players. Marching band, the whole nine yards. Okay, Dave Gallagher, okay, who's now a music teacher in Rutherford? Munaki. Munaki, okay. Um, Nathaniel Hoschel, who's at the University of Michigan, okay, as a saxophone bassoon major. Okay, Mike Santoro just graduated from Rutgers as a trombone major, okay. Um, Casey Carroll just graduated from Bloomsburg State University, okay. Those guys are looking for jobs, okay. I think they're going after you know what, okay. All right. Danny Reardon, who played lead trumpet in here, is going to Montclair State to major in music on trumpet. He was a lead trumpet player here. Okay, and then there's some people who are, have gone on to be in the music business. And I'll name a few way back. Larry Ross, who went to the Juilliard School of Music, San Francisco Conservatory, played lead trombone in the Mexico Symphony. Okay, Larry was a great guy, okay. There's some more, Sammy Hyken, okay, lead trumpet, not lead trumpet, the principal trumpet of the Miami Symphony, okay. Alex Wentz, guitarist, freelance, recording, full ride to Berkeley School of Music, playing in his jazz band. Mike Adamo was out in San Francisco making a living playing the drums, was in his jazz band. Mike Brown, Street Mike Manifesto, played lead alto saxophone in this jazz band, okay. Ben Caesar, the drummer for Brad Paisley, played in our jazz band. Okay, Dale Posey, of recent, uh, with Ricky Martin, has done recording, traveled all around the world, played bass in our jazz band. Okay, um, did I miss somebody? And, see this big thing over here? Okay, I ran into him in the parking lot on the way in. John Ginty, who's been around the world, has recorded over 70 albums. Fabulous. He was the drummer in the jazz band. What, huh? Organ, jazz band, drums. One day he comes to me and he goes like, Said you, what would you think if I played keyboard? And I'm like, what? He said, you're going to play the what? He goes, well, I got this keyboard from somebody and I'm fooling around with it. I said, well, go for it. I said, just give it a shot. So he played drums, he learned the keyboard, he started jamming around. And lo and behold, he's a professional musician. Imagine that. All he did was do what? Tried. So there's a whole bunch of our former students. And if, like I said, if I miss somebody, you want to yell them out? Anybody? Okay. Kovacs. Who? Ben Kovacs. Ben Kovacs. Oh, how did I miss Ben? What's he doing? Uh, full scholarship to uh, teach, but he's a master's in jazz. Ben Kovacs. Full scholarship to Eastman School of Music, master's in jazz, lead tenor here. Just graduated from Patterson University. Lee Patterson? I remember Ben when he came in, he was like, about yay big, you know. <laughs> Tennis saxophone was bigger than him. Actually, he started on alto, and he just kept practicing, practicing. And then one day I figured out he could also speak too. He was very quiet. He just went home and practiced a lot. So there's something to be said for that, okay? All right, now I'll just run this stuff down, so be patient. You know, I thank everybody, and I see a lot of people here. I'm going to name off some people in a minute, okay? If I miss somebody, I'm spaced. So here it is, okay, first of all, the administration, not only of Frailingheiser, but Marshall High School, like in my 29 years here, I've had a lot of support, and the music program has had a lot of support, so, like, thank them, okay, as Mr. Bruchak thanked me, I thank him, he's been a big supporter. Yeah, Bruchak. Okay, the Board of, the board of Education, okay, is, in Morristown, uh, has always been a strong supporter, tell them you like them. Tell them to keep it up, okay? Tell them to help you expand the music program. You know, just keep going. Like, this thing could be even better, okay? Trust me when I tell you that. Certainly all the teachers and staff that I've ever worked with, okay? When we have dress rehearsals and pull them out and the teachers are going, but I got a physics thing to do. And they, they go, all right, all right, just, just do it, you know? And I, I just, can't, you just can't imagine how cooperative they've been how, over, over my 29 years. It's, Blows me away. You have great teachers in this town. Please appreciate them. I know you do, but I'm just saying that. Okay? Certainly, the volunteers over the years. Okay? And this thing started out like the band boosters and volunteers. 
we were doing the marching band, and this guy kept coming around. Like, you know, first of all, I was like, hmm, you know? And he was leaning on the fence, and he was watching, and then he'd leave. Well, then I found out that his daughter was in the marching band. So I kind of sidled up to him and said, hi there, I'm John Schumacher. He goes, I'm Bob Schechner. I said, yeah, I know. I've checked. I said, listen, you're always around. Like, I could use some help. He goes, what do you want me to do? And that was the beginning of, like, anybody that knows, I see a lot of smiles, okay? Bob gave everything, not only to our music program, but to our town, okay? He's now retired, living in North Carolina. He's very big with the American Cancer Society. He's just a great guy, and he couldn't be here tonight, and I just, let's send out our love to Bobby. I see two over there. I saw you, Bert, okay? I saw you, okay? Uh, Mr. Richard Burstler and his wife, Diane, have been supporters and friends over the years. Wait, wait stand up. Tonight. Mr. Steve Berry. Mr. Franz Vinchger and his wife Linda. Right. Susan. I knew, I knew I'd miss something. Please forgive me. Okay. Hi there. Good to see you again. All right. What? Okay. And since they're over here, they're all over the place. Okay. Uh, this is this is um, Linda Berry. Linda served as our our music booster board president for many years and was always around to help out. So there's some people that have been with this program many years. Did I miss anybody that I don't see? Oh, I over here I see the whole entire Quinn family. That's right. Okay, there's four of them. Okay. Right behind them is the Benders. Good to see you guys. Anybody else? So up there in the balcony, cheap seats. Okay. Right, there's a lot of people from ever. Okay. Now, I guess it's colleagues. Okay. My colleagues, especially Carl Della Peruti, who worked with me for many years at the middle school. Okay, he was responsible for a lot of fine players. Okay. My current colleague over there, Steve Volker, who is going to be the next head band director over there. That's good, okay, because he knows what he's doing. Good guy. Okay, and certainly my colleagues here present, I see Norma Davis, okay, Mike Russo, okay, and uh, Mike Duzo, he was here, I saw him before, okay, guys that I've worked with, okay, and uh, certainly my longtime friend and colleague, Doug Rutan. So all of you guys, it's been a real pleasure. I once again would like to thank both John Backus and George Estes. John has been around our program for nine years, okay? He has a son in Spectrum, Peter, but his son just graduated several years back. John has been with the middle school jazz band, helping out, okay, directing, moving, encouraging, coaching, you know, lifting their spirits. And last night, he brought bunch kids. So, in the back, everybody give it up for John back. And certainly, George Estes. Where are you? That's overlooking. Okay, George, his son went through, he's been working with me. One day, this guy walks up to me and goes, hey, you need some help with the jazz band? I go, well, what can you do? I didn't know anything about it. He goes, well, I played saxophone. I'm an engineer, but I took saxophone and jazz. And, and, and so I said, well, let's give it a try. 25 years later, here we are, okay? George, Doug, and I have been here for all 25. So that's kind of a neat little thing. And, you know, George, you did the arrangement because that is the most good. Yeah. 
you're not going to know these guys, but I have to do that. I have to do this, okay? And that is, many moons back, I left teaching, and I was kicking around doing some stuff because you know I was like, whatever. Let's see if there's a business world. And there was a band director hired me to do his marching band. That was it, okay? And he. I guess the right words re-inspired me to come back to teaching because he watched me teach the marching band and he said, John, you love doing this. And I went like, oh yeah, I guess I do. And he's, uh, he's responsible for getting me back to teaching. Otherwise, I don't know what I would have been doing, mowing lawns or something. Not that that's anything bad, but I mean, I mean here I am. So his name was Joe Kaschek and he was the band director at Madison Central, now Old Ridge High School. And I owe him a debt of gratitude. So he's out there in the big cosmic wheel. Thank you, Joe. Certainly, our former music supervisor. Yes, at one time we had a music supervisor. We should have one again. We really should. And his name was Al Zariva. Al Zariva was the supervisor here, but, and he did many great things for this program. He also was my high school band director. And he inspired me when I was in the ninth grade and 10th grade, 11th grade, 12th grade. I remember one day he said to me, say, John, you do pretty good with that marching. Could you help Patty with her marching? Okay. And I kind of liked it. And then one day he said to me, could you help Bobby play his trumpet parts because he's not doing so good? Okay. And I did that. And I liked it. And then one day I was looking over his shoulder at his desk and he was moving little magnet things with posts on them on a little football paper thing in the field. I go, what are you doing? He goes, I'm writing the drill for the marching band. I said, can I watch? He says, yeah. And I said, how do you do that? He reaches up on the shelf and pulls out a book that's about this thick and says, read this. And he went back to work. About a week later, I came back. I said, so what are you doing and how do you? He reaches up and grabs volume two. <laughs> there were 12 volumes, okay? I learned to write drill, and I've written drill for our marching band here. I've written drill for other marching bands. Been very fortunate to have won championships, and he inspired me to come here. So that's my life in a nutshell. Okay, that a lot of you didn't know. So there it is. There's two people that couldn't be here possibly in reality because they're both passed. But my sister Joni drove me to trumpet lessons week in and week out. Rain, snow, sleet, fog, up the Garden State Parkway to Irvington, back down to Cranford. Good. And she supported me every step of the way. She was a big influence in my life. Also, my mom, who was born in 1911, okay? She was a little kid for World War I. She went through the Roaring Twenties. She went through the Depression. She saw TV invented, you know, to, the and airlines took off. She saw everything, and she was one of the most wise people that I've ever met. And she always said, always listen to people and do the right thing. And I hope that in all my years that I've been here, that I've given your children a little taste of what the right thing is and helped you with what you've done, because you've done a hell of a job raising your kids. So congratulations to all of you. I'd like to thank my family up here to her with, but what my son James can't be here. But here's my son Dan. Stand up. My son John. And my wife Debbie. Okay, so that's it. We're going to play one more. However, two things. Certainly next year there will be a Jazz Night 26. But there's enough people in this room floating around that you could make it 30, 35, try for 50. Because that's really a cool one. So we've done 25 great years, go for 50. And, you know, to quote, <laughs> to quote my favorite guy, so long and thanks for all the fish.